Thousands of years ago, the Chinese philosophers described the polarity of two interpenetrating forces, upward rising and downward sinking. The upward rising is the force of action, the downward sinking, a reconnecting to source. Someone with good sense is often described as having their feet on the ground. Grounding means connecting to present reality. Grounding describes the process of connecting to the physical aspect of life on earth and the larger universal forces that sustain it. Grounding is reconnecting your key to the universal power, aligning a unified field. Life takes place in an ocean of energy. We are part of an indivisible whole. The ocean's waves appear out of and return to the oceanic source. Waves above the ocean are visible. Unseen waves also move beneath the surface. Likewise, aspects of our lives are visible. The waves on the surface of subconsciousness show up as identities and personalities. There are also unseen forces affecting our lives beneath the discernment of the conscious mind. Avoidance of the downward sinking force seems a human tendency. To say something is a downer is usually a negative remark. We get that sinking feeling that life isn't the way we thought it was. We are right. It is necessary to look beyond the separate waves to see the ocean. Similarly, we must look beyond our separate identities to perceive the totality. Grounding implies sensing our connection to our substance under the surface level of what we can see. Our distinctions of awareness are not as clear in the realms of the subconscious and the unconscious. We do not really know what's going on there. In the realm of the spirit, ground implies connection to the power conscious awareness is based on. The space we are conscious of usually stops at about our feet. There is more power to draw on than the point of contact your body stands on. Like icebergs, where only one seventh is visible above the water, the majority of our power is invisible to us beneath the conscious level. In our busy lives, we generally pay little attention to realms beyond the conscience. Most of the time, the conscience realm takes all of our attention. Ungrounded, the shock of an energy rush creates tension. We can ground the charge of energy through the focus of intention. When we center, relaxation is a natural outcome. When we relax, connection to the ground is a natural outcome. Ground implies connection to the source of our movement. Connection to ground is power. As an example, our power to move in the physical realm comes from the connection of our mass with the mass of the earth. Imagine two people on a polished marble floor with one partner barefoot and the other in silk stockings. Which quality of connection would you rather operate from to defend yourself? When the disturbance of the energy rush hits, we commonly lose our ground. In a physical movement, there is inertia. Excess momentum can throw us off balance. When we center our mass, we connect to the ground in a balanced state. The implications of the physical grounding transfers to the other realms. We need ground for effective action. 
in every domain of being. The ability to move effectively in the mental and emotional realms comes from grounding in each of those domains. Intense situations in the emotional realm generate a charge of mental, emotional, and physical energy. Even after an action is finished, we carry leftover energy in the form of momentum, hormones, memories, and feelings. If I've got a charge about a specific issue, it affects the stance I take. It affects the way I hold my body. I know if I'm unsettled, and have a big charge left over at the end of an experience, I am not really grounded. Along the way, I've lost connection to my ground of being. We rarely perceive how much power the forces in these domains have in the creation of our lives. Exploring these realms can help us deepen our understanding, connection, and collective learning. The exploration includes creating a vocabulary that will enhance our ability to learn together. When we ground the charge we get from the rush, we can draw on energy beyond our present capability. The Hakama, a dark pant-like skirt of samurai dress worn in Aikido dojos, represents the deeper aspects of awareness. The Hakama reminds us to connect with that which is below our everyday consciousness and all that it implies. Reconnecting with the downward sinking force assembles our totality. Grounding makes the actions we take flow from a state of connection to deeper aspects of our being as well as larger universal forces. O oh, Sensei was less than five feet tall. When Osensei grounded, sumo wrestlers couldn't lift him up. There's grounded, and then there's grounded. He'd sit in a kneeling position and have five black belts pushing on his forehead, trying to push him over. Often as not, he'd be lecturing as they pushed on him. They couldn't move him. There's grounded. And then there's grounded. It is inevitable. As the rush increases, so does the charge. The charge ungrounded can startle us and disturb our circuits, making us ineffective. In an emergency, a situation with a big rush, we may take on more energy than we can handle. When the energy rush reaches a certain level of voltage, we get blown out and cannot find our ground. As the charge increases, unless we are skilled in grounding, we get uptight, electrocuted, so to speak, by our own energy. Resistance impedes the flow and diminishes power and with it capability. A disconnected state loses power and a constricted one is likely to misuse power. Weakness engenders defensiveness, whereas confidence produces an open presence. Connected to a sense of power, we no longer default to defensive behavior. A center grounded state of being handles power in an appropriate manner. The rush happens to us. Grounding requires conscious attention. In the rush of excitement, we need to practice consciously reconnecting with our ground. Without a way to practice, what reconnecting does occur for us happens in our sleep. The charge is always going on for us. Some rushes are large and therefore obvious. Other situations produce smaller rushes. 
The smaller ones may have a greater effect on us in the long run because we may not notice them. If we fail to notice the upset, we do not reconnect. When the rush hits, grounding the charge enables us to stay an open channel, non-resistant to the flow of energy. At a slow enough pace, we can train grounding the charge. When we ground the charge that the rush creates, it becomes accessible power instead of power that upsets us. Grounding increases our ability to allow energy to flow freely instead of channeling it into habituated patterns. Energy potentially gives birth to creativity. Creativity adapts naturally to the needs of the moment instead of operating out of habit, trying to make what we already know work, even when it doesn't. If I can continue to ground the charge, I can stay centered and be present for experience as it changes. I do not have to get stuck in old thoughts or feelings. I can let go of pattern behavior. I can adapt to what's going on. Grounding the charge allows me to be in the experience of the universe as it is and adapt to whatever is needed in the moment. Grounding the charge of energy and releasing our holding patterns into a reassessment of the moment increases presence and fluidity. Grounding the charge enables the full power of the energy in our system to serve our intention. When we are uptight, emotionally distraught, our thinking fragments. We lose common sense. We do things we wish we hadn't. Presence opens the doorway to the essence of our power instead of being caught in the past. How do you know that you are grounded? I feel my shoulders drop and my lower abdomen open and settle. My torso straightens. If I am standing, I can feel my knees flex. It is a tangible, physical feeling for me. I can feel muscles relax, and I relax emotionally. How do you ground the charge? Start with the physical, and see if you notice effects in the other realms. Example. Take a slow, deep breath. Exhale slowly and sense the weight of the body settling into the earth. As you center and relax, use your imagination to sense your physical weight dispersing into the ground. Take a moment to picture it and another to feel what you experience. Next level. Imagine or visualize your weight pouring through your connection to the ground and dispersing into the earth. Continue the visualization until you can picture your energy extending throughout the earth to the whole universe, the source of being, the power of creation. Repeat as needed. Effectively grounding the charge increases our capability, creating a field of potential. When we ground the charge, we can use its potential. Unlimited possibility opens Creativity is always available, but in a state of resistance, the options are invisible to us. 
To allow and utilize our full power, awareness must continually reconnect our totality. Grounding trains us to focus attention on reconnecting rather than lose attention on the upset that occurs when we disconnect from the experience of the unified field.